دوکسیگا بوردن کیا مال الله آیه آمانو آمانو بوردن آنده اسکول. بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم. بیس پیونیو. السلام علیکم. فون فور استودنتیس. دیس تیچر عبداللهی. وی ویل کنتینیو آور آور جغرافی لسان. دیس لس فایف. وی آر این دی چابتر اگریکالچا. سو دی تاپیک دات وی آر دوین وی آر لرنین تودی است دانیمال فامین. دانیمال فامین. سو ویل بی ویل تو نو دی دیفرنت تایپس اف دانیمال فامین. The problem is facing animal farming in the tropical areas, and the possible solution is the cattle farming and so on. So now let us go to our lesson. Animal farming can be can be categorized into these two types. The first one is commercial animal farming, and the second one is nomadic herding. Nomadic herding or hardening. Nomadic nomadic herding. So nomadic herding uh, is generally the these two are very different. For example, suppose you have 10 cows, and those 10 cows, your intention is to make them fat and sell them and get them a profit. This is commercial animal farming. But if you have, for example, 10 go 10, 50 goats, and, and the intention of those 50 goats is not to sell them, but to profit from them in terms of life, to eat their, to eat their meat, to drink their milk, not to sell just for your own and family, that's called a nomadic hardening. So the nomadic herders, they always make sure that the number increases. But those one is, the intention is to sell them and get a profit from it, and get a profit from it. So commercial animal farming can be categorized into these three, commercial livestock farming. So commercial livestock farming is, you know, trading the livestock uh, f it is, and, and, it, and also this product is, be the hardest, be the skin, be the meat, all of it together. What about the dairy farming? You know the dairy farming is only about, is only about the milk. So, you, you, so it, this one is about rearing cattle f and the purpose is only for the milk and the byproduct is from the milk. And then we have the mixed farming that we shall see. Okay. So let us start with commercial livestock farming. So what are the products of this type of farm? The products of this type of farm are what? Meat, hides, and wool. When we are saying wool, we are talking about the covering, the wool. Meat, hides, and wool. So the, so, some of the sheep is, most of the, some of the sheep is are here, and the barbos is what? Is wool. So the main producing areas are where? Are in the grass, land, belties, of both hemispheres. The grassland pelts of both hemispheres. When we are saying both hemispheres, we are talking about the, so the northern hemisphere, and at the same time, we are talking about the southern hemisphere. So, the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, the grassland is in those two areas. So, this region, this, this region farm unit is called the range in North America. Okay, so now the grassland area in, in the North Americans, they call it what? Ranch. That's the name they give. The grassland, in the North America, they, that's the term they give range. South America, they also give what? Estancia, Estancia. Australia, they call their grassland this, the name what? Station. And New Zealand, this they call it what? They call it is is station. So new new grass species such as Sudagas or Sudan grass, Agus alfalfa, are being developed. So those grasses are very very tall, sometimes more than two meters high, and they are good for 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 the for the for, it is a very good food for the for the livestock. Okay. So now these are some examples from those livestock used as a commerce. So as you can see, these are the camel and these are the, the sheep and goats together at the, at the, you know, at Berbera, at Berbera. Okay, and now they are being exported. They are being exported. So a good example of commercial livestock is the one that we generally do as some landers, because our life most, mostly depends on livestock. We sell them to the Gulf countries. So this big ship is taken thousands of ships. So now let us go to the, to the cattle farming. So grass is the natural food of cattle. And because of this, they are reared in almost the old temperate, old temperate and tropical grassland. So what is the food of the cattle most? It's grass. 
And wherever there is a grass, cattle can be reared. Wherever grass is available, cattle can be reared. So all trembrate and tropical grasslands, they are suitable for the, for the rearing of cattle. So most of the cattle are bred for pay for their meat. So the meat, the meat of the cattle is called pay. And some of them are also, and the rest are for dairy and for hyades. So these are the three objectives. Mostly cattle are bred for beef, for skin or hide, and for dairy. And the dairy is the term used when the cattle are rated for milky, for milky purposes. Okay, what are the main types of cattle? Two main types of cattle are bred across the world. What are they? The first one is European cattle. An example is they are Aberdeen, Angus, Shorthorn, and Hereford. So these are reared extensively in the cool and warm temperate regions of Western Europe, South America, Australia, and USA. Okay, European cattle, European cattle. And the second one is called Cebu or Humbucket one. So this one is also, this is the one that is common for us. Ours is Cebu or Humbucket. These are reared mainly in the tropical grasslands of Asia, even in Africa also. So, there is also another one now called crossbred cattle. These two has been, you know, mated together, genetically modified together, and then there is a third one that, you know, resulted from this. They call it what? Crossbred. They call it crossbred cattle. Crossbred. But these two are generally the common cross cattle. Crossbred cattle. Crossbred cattle. Okay. Let us continue again. Commercial cattle farming. Australia and Argentina are the two, are the most important beef exporting countries of the world. So these two countries, they export the beef in the world. They are number one, number one. Australia and Argentina. Most of their beef is exported where? Most of their beef is exported to Europe and North America. So Australia and Argentina, they are number one. Okay, in terms of exportation, exporting of, of the meat of the cattle, that's beef. So commercial cattle farming are of two main types. When we are cultivating the cattle for trade and for commerce, it is because of two purposes. What are they? Number one is the breeding. The breeding means is making it more in terms of number and rearing the young cattle. So this one, the number is put a lot on a lot of effort. So the number is increasing, increasing, increasing. And this one is the fattening of cattle for slaughter. The cattle is, they are made very fat by providing them a very, a, a very good fodder and wood. And finally they are slaughtering and their meat are exported. So these are the two. Some people they breed the cattle, they breed it and they make it more in terms of number. And some countries, they make it fatter like Australia and New Zealand and finally they export it. They export it. Problem is facing cattle in tropical regions. What are the major problems that are facing the cattle in the tropical in the tropics in the tropics? The tropics are have to high temperature. So the first one is what is disease number one. The second one is remoteness of the savanna land. The grazing land for the cattle is very far, so they have to walk, and they have to also walk to and from, which is going to cause Lots of, you know, weight, lots of weight. The other one is also climatic problem. Sometimes it is very dry in, during the winter. So these are generally the three major problems facing cattle farming in the tropical region. So this is, what are those diseases? For example, the sleeping sickness is a common one. What is the, you know, uh, insect that causes sleeping sickness? It's called what? Tusk fly, okay? Tusk fly is the one that causes it. It can cause a serious problem to the cattle and it can even kill. So diseases are very common in those areas. And this, this fly also hides in this uh, grassland, this, so it bites. The second one is remoteness of the savanna land. The savanna land is a little bit far from the cattle and they don't have a very good roads and transportation. For that reason, the cattle have to walk miles to and from. So whatever it consumes, it uses as an energy. So loss of weight will be there. So the savanna line is at considerable distance from the coastal borders, road and railways. Sometimes, you know, the cattle has to walk 20, 30, 50 kilometers to, this, to, the, to the market, to the port. And that causes loss of weight. Even that, that is a very good example in our case. You see sometimes cattle and, you know, 
uh, Kamala and even Shibisa and Gautis being moved from one city to another, from which Allah to Ergeis on foot. So what would happen? They will lose a lot of weight, a lot of weight, and that will diminish also their sale. The third problem that faced the cattle farming in tropical regions is climate, climate. So the hot, wet summers and warm, dry winters of the savanna land present real problems. During the summer it is hot and wet, and during the winter it is warm and dry. So this, especially the winter, is the major serious problem. So these are the three major problems facing cattle farming in the tropical region. So now let us go to the possible solution. How can we solve? How can we solve? What are the possible solutions? Okay? These are the possible solutions. The first one is they follow up what? This is resistant prairies. As we talked about, you know, uh, the British they did what's called cross breeding, the European cattle and the Zebu cattle. So then there was a new one that was resistant to diseases. Imagine the European cattle is very is very well known with you know with having a, a, a lot of beef. They also provide a lot of milk, but they were not they are not resistant to diseases. And the the African one or the Asian one, the Zebu or ham packet, it doesn't provide a lot of meat. Okay, it doesn't get fat easily. And at the same time, you know. It has an amazing advantage. What is that? It's resistant to disease. So these two were, you know, cross spread and then the offspring became those who had all the characteristics, providing a lot of milk, providing a lot of meat, resistant to diseases. So develop disease resistant breeders is very important. Second one, the insects should be controlled. That are causing the diseases, like the testis fly. And the other one is, we talked about, sometimes during the winter, there is a shortage of water. So there should be, you know, dams being built. There should be wells built. There should be artesian water available for them. Wells should be dug. Perkades should be made for the livestock during the dry season, so that the water is available. The other one is what? You, we talked about some of the cattle, they, they walk. Miles. So now roads should be constructed, vehicles should be uh, provided to improve and extend roads, to enable fattened cattle and to be transported quickly to slaughterhouses so that the cattle can be taken easily to their destinations without losing weight. The other solution for those problems facing the cattle in tropical region is to overcome traditional and, and religious practices which at present prevent commercial cattle breeding because there are traditional there are some people who just keep cattle because of their num because of a number for example the Maasai mostly they don't slaughter it is a bride for them so this also should be prevented should be stop it should be stop it so the last point of our today's lesson will be the dairy cattle farming the dairy cattle farming. So this one, the cattle, the main objective of cattle is what? Is to provide milky. The objective is for milky. Okay? So for dairy cattle to give a high yield of milky throughout the year, what, what do we need? They must be reared on rich pastures and fed with high quality fodder crops during the winter. So if you want, for example, if you are planning to, you know, start cattle farming, for milky, they need a very good pasture. They need a very good fodder and food during the winter. So whatever you, with the food you provide, you get the milk you want. Less food, less milk. A very good food, pasture and fodder, you get a very good milk. This type of farming whose product is milk is located what? Always near to large urban centers on rich and is having access to urban centers by efficient transport. So most of those, you know, who are involved in dairy cattle farming, they should be close to the market. Why? Because milky can become, you know, can, can perish easily. They can rot easily. They don't last for many days. For that reason, they should be, most of the time, the, the dairy cattle farmers, they are always close to the town and market. And at the same time, even if they are far, they have very good transportation, very good transport network. The other one is, there is also another objective for the dairy cattle farming, not only for milk, but for butter and cheese. The milk can be processed to make them into butter and cheese, but those ones can be far from towns. It's not a problem because those can last long. 
Europe, North America, and New Zealand are carried out in dairy, in dairy farming. So that's for all today. This is Teacher Abdullahi wishing you a happy Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, take care. Uh, there will be an assignment for you in the Amano website. Uh, put, put, fill in your username, your password, and do it only at one time. Stay at home, stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.